Beisou now, the radical Islamic Palestinian war against Israel. Terrorist Palestinians are now calling for a revolution against Israel, this following two weeks of deadly attacks on Israeli citizens and Jewish holy shrines. In fact, in Jerusalem right now, it's so dangerous that the mayor is urging all licensed gun owners to carry their firearms at all times. This is the Obama administration continues to accuse Israel of not wanting peace. Are we living on the same planet, Liz? I've been calling day in, day out in every forum in the United Nations, in the U.S. Congress, in Israel, in Jerusalem, in Tel Aviv. I haven't done so in Nepal because I haven't visited it. I've called on President Abbas to resume unconditional negotiations immediately. Right now, as we speak, we can meet. I have no problem with that. I think we should stop immediately this wave, this wave of incitement against Israel and these attacks, murderous attacks against Jews. The point of uh, my statement is simple. I'm willing to meet him. He's not willing to meet me. And you ask me about the resumption of negotiations? Come on, get with the program. Seven Israelis and at least 30 Palestinians have been killed so far this week. But this bloodshed might only be the tip of a deadly iceberg as the dynamic in the Middle East is quickly and radically changing. Joining me now from Southern California, international affairs expert and editor of the Newsbomb Report, Barry Newsbomb. Barry, this week at the State Department, uh, we profiled it on this program, the State Department refused to condemn the attacks by the Palestinians on Israelis. Why is that? It is so mortifying, Graham, that it defies description as to what the program is behind the lack of justice and speech that should be appropriately coming from not only the State Department, but the White House press secretary, Josh Earnest. And just today in the Korean press conference, President Obama was asked the same question. Will you condemn the massive wave of violence against innocent men, women, and children on the streets of Israel? And not one single representative of the United States government will even have the decency to say these murderous attacks are outlandish and must be stopped. Instead, what the U.S. government is saying is both sides must scale down their violence and both sides must return to a peaceful coexistence. It, it reminds me of 9-11. And can you imagine at, say, 9-12 or 9-13 if the headline said... Ten Arab men killed in several plane crashes across the United States. If that happened here, America would have responded with mass indignation. Yet, that is yet exactly this, the equivalent of what's going on in Israel yet right this now. This president can be definitive uh, against police, it, like in Ferguson, Missouri. It's, it's mind-boggling. In my opinion, I think this president is the first openly anti-Semitic president in the Oval Office, as led by Valerie Jarrett. But the Iran nuke treaty, um, there could be a legal snag for it. There's an existing law. It's the uh, Iran Threat Reduction Act that President Obama signed himself that could be in direct conflict with the Iran nuke treaty. In a nutshell, what's going on there? You know, we talked about this before on the show, Graham. I'm waiting for the court challenge to take to federal court. If the Congress would just ask a court to intervene and apply the laws signed by the president, I believe the JCPOA would be put on ice. Here's the story. All parts of the agreement were to be presented to Congress, and once Congress got all the pieces, including, quote, all side agreements, then the review period would start. Well, what we found out was there are secret side agreements, none of which in their entirety have ever been provided to Congress, and as a result, Congress voted in mid-September, and I wrote about this, saying that the president is in violation of that law. However... The Congress has taken no act yet to get into the court system. I believe if they do, they could get this deal set aside in the courts at least uh, long enough to get us past the end of Obama's So term. why don't they? Are they impotent? Are they not paying attention? Are they not listening to this program? What? I, I can only speculate it has to do with the fact that right now the caucus is leaderless 
and they are searching for who's going to pick up the mantle. No one knows who it's going to be. Maybe Paul Ryan. I think he would have the chutzpah to go do it. It's going to take a leader to step up and say... The courts need to intervene. The law is being broken today. Well, Barry, I would uh, modify what you said. I think that even with John Boehner or with uh, Paul Ryan in charge, they're still leaderless. Now, Iran um, just recently is test firing some new missiles, some new rockets. Roll tape. Most all Iranian cities have at least one missile base. What you see is like an iceberg floating on the water, some part of which is only visible. We have so many such bases that even if they manage to identify some of them, it still will be to no avail. Clearly, Iran is on a war footing right now. They just test fired these, these new missiles, which are precision guided and well within the range of Israel. Game changer? It's, it's much worse than that. They already had missiles that could have hit, hit Israel. These ballistic missiles, uh, Graham, will reach all of Europe, and supposedly there's a guidance system being installed on the Imad missile that could take a missile to the United States. It's in violation of the JCPOA. It's in violation of U.S. U.N. sanctions that have never been repealed. I think it's a big uh, middle finger to everyone that signed the JCPOA, and they will not back down. They are in violation of the New Deal before the New Deal even takes effect. And these bases that the general just talked about are 150 feet underground under every major right. mountain site in Iran. Right. And how do we know there aren't centrifuges down there? They're not going to be allowed in. That is the inspectors right. because they will not allow inspectors on military bases. This is right. a disaster. And I think in the end, Barry, I think the only person who's going to be following this agreement, this Obama-Iran New Deal, is Barack Obama. <laughs> Barry, thanks. Thank you. Coming up next, how an Article 5 convention of the states can return fiscal sanity to Washington as the Daily Ledger continues.